Hello guys, it's my hope that you're doing well. Welcome to this session. And in this video, we're going to look at asphyxiation. Asphyxiation is one of the one of the causes of death that are encountered in forensic science. It's common. So we're going to begin with defining asphyxia. And this is a condition in which there is interference in the uptake of the or the uptake of oxygen and in this case the body is deprived of oxygen and it may lead to an unconsciousness brain injury or even death asphyxiation can be classified in different categories where well, we have mechanical, we have pathological, we have chemical, as well as uh, miscellaneous. For mechanical asphyxia, we have instances like hanging, strangulation, throating, smothering, choking, drowning, etc. When it comes to pathological, these are the is a type of asphyxiation ways that is brought about by diseases or illnesses in examples we have bronchitis we have tumors as well as uh, acute oedema we have chemical asphyxia or chemical asphyxiation this is brought about by chemicals maybe the body reacts with certain chemicals and these chemicals include cyanides opium barbiturates etc okay for mechanical mechanical asphyxia is brought about when force is applied maybe to the to somebody's neck and the body is unable to take oxygen because the there is blockage of the of the airways and we have miscellaneous asphyxia and all the this we have all the other types of uh, all all the other method all types of asphyxiation or asphyxia that are not in the in the three categories that is mechanical pathological and chemical and asphyxiation is characterized by one postmortem lividity which is usually well developed in this case. And postmortem lividity is the plurifocal staining of the skin that is brought about by gravitational settling of blood in vessels after the circulation is seized or stopped. When when the body is unable to take oxygen or the body is deprived of oxygen and there is uh, and death death is a result of it you find that the body or the blood the blood that is in the vessels is going to to settle in relation to gravity maybe if they are lying on their lower on on, on their right side the blood in the vessels is going to be settled on the right side and this is it is going to be shown by darkening of the of the skin on these sides a color that is dark it appears more of purple asphyxiation is also characterized by the tongue being protruded in most cases and you also have froth, frothy and bloody mucus escapes the mouth as well as the nostrils Another another way through which asphyxiation is characterized is a uh, through pedicure hemorrhages. These are seen in the in the eyes because there's there's rupture of the blood vessels. We also have uh, eyes being prominent, the conjunctivae are congested, and the pupils are dilated. Those are the external, 
external ways in which uh, asphyxiation is characterized now we have internal ones internal ones are the ones that need to be analyzed not just by watching or not just by looking for example for the in the case, in the case of postmortem lividity you just need to look and you will see there's a uh, purple staining on the skin etc now we have internal ones and in the internal ones we have the we find that the blood is fluid and dark and this is because there is a uh, increased carbon dioxide we have large veins are full of blood you see the the flow has been seized and then you have the lungs are dark and purple and in most cases the brain is uh, often congested we have causes of asphyxiation and this is caused okay the the major causes we have the closure of the air air passages by external external pressure on the neck this is in the case of hanging strangulation it is in we have closure of the external respiratory air faces like uh, the case of smothering which prevents the entry of air so now we go to the the causes one we have perinatal or birth asphyxia and this is caused by lack of oxygen in mother's blood for some reason the mother's blood lacks oxygen we also have reduced uh, breathing in the mother due to anesthesia we also have uh, compression of the umbilical cord we have poor poor functioning of the placenta as well as uterine rupture another cause of asphyxia or asphyxiation is a uh, drowning in the case of drowning when when one drowns and they breathe in they're going to breathe in water a lot of water is going to go into the lungs and the way a human is a human body is created their lungs don't take in water they take oxygen and not water we have chemical asphyxia and here there is a an asphyxiant which is a chemical that causes asphyxia and this involves inhaling a substance that cuts off the body's oxygen supply it may replace oxygen in the lungs or even disrupt oxygen delivery in the blood another one is uh, anaphylaxis and this is a severe allergic reaction to maybe food medicine insecting etc the body in this case thinks uh, that the substance is an in bed and the immune system makes antibodies which release chemicals that cause symptoms like a uh, short shortness of breath this is an, an allergic reaction and the body reacts another cause is asthma and this is a chronic condition that causes the inflammation of the air or in the airways and can cause difficulties or symptoms like difficulty in breathing and in cases where we have severe asthma attack the airways swell and constrict another one is uh, airway being blocked by or with foreign objects maybe when one is choked there's a foreign object in the airways and this makes it difficult for them to breathe and in this case to breathe and in this case the body is going to be deprived of oxygen another cause is strangulation and this happens when pressure is placed on the neck and this reduces a person's ability to inhale we have incorrect body position and in this causes uh, this blocks airways and it, this one is referred to as a positional asphyxia 
also have drug overdose. We find that drugs like opioids can interfere with the brain's ability to regulate breathing. That is a brief definition of what asphyxia is. The